is that time of the week again where you get sent all of the reports, everyone sends you all their stuff and you need to add everything together, summarize it and send it on to your boss. You can do this in Excel. In fact, there's a couple of different ways, but I guarantee you that it's probably not gonna be as easy as using Python and Pandas. Imagine not having to worry about all the copy and paste errors, all the problems where Excel freezes when you've got too many lines going on, and trying to just copy and paste seven or eight or 10 or 20 different files all into one massive headache. Using Pandas, we can import everything into our code. We can get all of the files from one directory. We can then put that all into one data frame in our memory, and we can then work with it like that. It's easy to use, it's easy to summarize data with, we can do pivot tables. Pandas is such a massive data science library, it can do anything you can think of in that scope, and it's so easy to learn, there's so much documentation. In fact, today we're only gonna write like 20 lines of code, and that's gonna import in seven different files, about 7,000 lines in total, and then we're gonna save that extra new file for our reference, and then we're gonna create a couple of pivot tables and export those to file, all in 20 lines of code. It's really worth learning how to do if you do anything like this in your job and you need to automate it to save yourself some time. So in this video, we're only gonna do some very, very minor analytics, but if you wanna learn more about how to do more complicated analytics and you wanna understand how to do all that, then you wanna check out this right here. Whilst data science and analytics is a huge complex beast, it doesn't need to be intimidating to get started and there's a fun and easy way to learn more. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, a fun and interactive way to learn maths, data science, and computer science. It's all hands-on and a real learn-by-doing approach, which suits me the best, and I find it to be a very effective way to learn, all in a low-pressure environment. You can work fully at your own pace, and Brilliant supports you with a quiz when you sign up to make sure you're set with the content that's right for you, regardless of where you are in your learning journey. They have guided lessons that all have helpful hints if you need the help getting to the answer yourself, rather than just giving it to you without you understanding the concepts fully. I've enjoyed and got loads out of the data analysis and algorithms courses, which really support learning code. And given how in demand and ubiquitous data skills are, taking the time to learn what these courses have to offer is a no brainer. For someone like me who deals with a lot of data in their day job and content, being able to analyze real data in platform really helped me increase my knowledge. You can get started today for free for 30 days and the first 200 people will also get 20% off an annual plan. So visit brilliant.org slash John Watson Rooney to check it out. Now onto the code. So our scenario depicts that we have been given a load of CSV files all in the same sort of columns and format. And uh, we need to extract some data out, do something with it. Now, if you wanted to do this in Excel, it would be quite long winded, a lot of copy and pasting, a lot of room for error. And that's why we're gonna use Python. So to start with, with you want to create a Python virtual environment. For me, that would be Python 3-M and V and V, V, E and V to call it virtual environment like that. You need to run that so when we install pandas, you don't get any conflicts across your system. So you can easily like manage it. You don't have to worry about dependencies having problems. Then you want to do pip install pandas like so. I've already got this installed. Obviously do this after you activate your virtual environment. So from here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file. I'm, you can do this however you like. I'm just using Linux, so I'm just gonna do touch. I'm gonna to call this main.py, and I'm gonna open this in my code editor. Now I'm using NeoVim. Uh, this is just the code editor that I use. You can use any, VS Code is a good one to use if you don't, if, you're, if you haven't got a choice already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by importing in the things that we need. By convention, we import pandas as PD. So you wanna do import, pandas as pd like this now i'm going to import a couple of other things as well i'm going to import in os and i'm going to import in glob and i will talk about those in just a minute i'm also going to do from rich i'm going to import in print rich is a separate package you don't need to use this i use this just because it makes it neater when i print my terminal so these are the imports that we need so the first thing we need to think about is how we're going to open and add all of those C the data from all of those CSV files into uh, one central data frame for pandas that we can then do something with. So we need to say, first of all, we wanna get the folder that we're working in. Now, I suggest that you do it like this. We'll say folder is equal to os.get current working directory, CWD. This means we're gonna say 
all of the CSV files we're working with are in the same folder as this code. This is just the easiest way to do it. You could, of course, have them in a different folder. You just need to make sure you get the path right. Now we need to get a list of all the files that are in that directory, all of the CSV files that we're working with. And that's where we use glob. So I'll say our files is going to be equal to glob dot glob. And this is where our folder is. So this is our current working directory plus, and we want to say, slash and star dot csv here so this basically means go to our current working directory which is our folder here and give me every file which is a csv file now when you do this you just need to be careful that you don't have any other csv files in here you only want to put the actual reports you're handling with in this folder run your code do whatever you need to do and then get rid of them otherwise they'll just try and add them all together because we are getting every single file in this folder that's star.csv you can change this you can make it so it's a bit more appropriate to you if you like i find this is just nice and easy now we want to loop through all of these. So I'm going to create a new list because we're going to create a load of data frames and then concatenate them all together. This is generally an okay approach. If you have hundreds and hundreds of massive files, you might come across some issues doing it like this because we're creating loads of data frames and then storing them in memory and then adding them together. But generally, you'll be absolutely fine to do this. So we'll do for file in files. I'm just going to use df just for my temporary available uh, variable is equal to pd for pandas dot read csv. So we're reading the csv file, the contents of it, and we're going to read the file that we are opening. And I say the index column uh, is equal to none. We don't need that. And also uh, header is equal to zero. I don't know if this is strictly true. I just kind of use it like this. Then we want to append our uh, data frames to our list here. So we're going to end up with a nice long list of these data frames. Now from here, we can just concatenate them, we can add them all together within pandas. So I'm just going to call this result is equal to PD dot concat. And then we give it the list of all of our data frames. And I'm going to say our axis is so it all works is equal to zero and then ignore, ignore index, ignore index is equal to true. These little command, these uh, commands here may not be necessary for you, but they just make it a bit more easy to make sure that we get all the data. And essentially, this is all the code now that you need to add all the data from all those CSVs into one big data frame that we can then do whatever we need to do with. So I'm going to do result.head and then I'm going to print also result.tail. Now, when you do this in pandas, it just means it shows you the, the top five and the bottom five of the data. So I'm coming over to a different terminal to run this. If you're using VS Code, you can just hit run or whatever. However you run your Python files, I just do it like this. And I'm going to run main. And you'll see that we now have the top five, zero to four. Here's the information. And then the bottom, 7,000. So we have 7,000 results, uh, which was, I think we had seven files or six or seven files. So 1,000 each file all added together. So that's it. That's all we needed to do. If you wanted to get this all in one CSV file, what you want to do is I'll move this to the middle of the screen. We don't need to print these out here now. We will just do result dot two CSV. Give it the CSV file name. So I'm just going to say results slash uh, output dot CSV. And I'm also going to say here, the uh, our index is equal to false. We don't want the index. Now results slash, which is I've put here, is I'm just saying, let's add this to a new folder called results that I've created. Because otherwise, if you save this output.csv file to the same folder that you're working in, uh, as it would be by default, it's obviously going to try and load it up when we run this code again. So I save, come back to my other screen, and I run it again. Don't worry about these warnings that you're getting in pandas at the moment. They're just deprecating some stuff. It's not going to cause you an issue now. And if it does, you'll be probably, by the time it does, you'll be on a new version anyway, so it won't be an issue. So let's come back to our code, and I'm going to open up a new file. And here's my output.csv. And you can see here, here is all of the data, all added neatly together. Now, if we were to try to do that in Excel, we'd have to open up every single one and copy and paste across. It's not that useful. You could, of course, do it slightly differently in Excel by you know doing the data import. But hey, this is much easier, and this is repeatable. And this is barely 19 lines of code. Any file that we now put in this folder is going to be 
the same thing is going to happen to it. So you can keep this code and just put all of your reports into this folder, run this, and there you are, they're all together in one big file. But one big file might not be that useful to us. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what we can actually do with this data. So I'm going to comment out this, adding it to CSV file, and we're going to talk a little bit about types. So in our data, we did have a date column. So if I were to go here and do print result.dtypes, save, come over and run, we're going to see that I have the types for each of the uh, columns that are in my data frame. This is like an Excel if you were to try and format a column as a number or as text, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So the only one that it's actually defaulted to correctly is the quantity which it's recognized as a number. The rest are object. This is fine, except for the one that is date. We don't want the date as an object, we want the date as an actual date, or you might have other columns that you might want to have as whatever whatever data type they may or may not be. So we can correct that nice and easily. So I'm going to come back to my code. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that column, change the type of it by overwriting it. So we do result, because this is our data frame. Then we say that we want to change the date column. We want to change it to equals to pd dot date uh, to date time. There it is, to date time. And we give it the column that we want to change to the date time. So we do result date like this. So all we're doing is we're saying, take the result date column, so that's the date column that we've been working with, and then change it and override it by everything with the actual date time to date time. So I'm gonna say, let's copy this, and I'm gonna run this again underneath, get rid of that P that we don't need, save. I'm gonna format my code with rough, that should be fine, okay, don't worry about that. I'm gonna run it again, and you can see the first lot is before I change the date, you can see it's object, and then underneath here where I change it, it's now a date time object. Now this is very important because if you were going to do any further analysis with this in Python and Pandas, you now have an actual date time object that you can work with. So you can say, give me everything between these dates, between these dates or from this date, et cetera, et cetera. So that makes a huge difference. But that's not always going to be, you know, the most useful thing that we would want to do with this data. We're going to want to be able to summarize it. And to do that in Excel, we would use a pivot table, maybe. We can do exactly the same thing here. We can use pandas pivot tables. So to create a pivot table in pandas, it's very similar to like an Excel. So you choose the columns and you choose the values and you choose how you want to sum those values up and then you would add them to a new sheet in Excel. In pandas we do the same, we add them to a new data frame. So we're not changing our original data, we're just taking it and we're creating a new data frame, think of it like a new sheet or a new workbook, and that has our pivoted data on. Now to do that we need to give it a new name, so I'm just going to call this one by product, this is going to be equal to pd.pivottable. So there's a pd.pivot table function here. And now we can add in, hey, take from our result data frame, which is our big long list of everything. And we want to say that the index, which is the, the columns that we want to use, is going to be, and I think if I come over here, we want to do it by item, size, and the values are going to be quantity. So we'll say item and size. So this is going to give us a pivot table by item and then size like this. And then we'll give it the values is equal to quantity. Now I'm doing this as a list. You don't have to do it as a list if it's just one, but I prefer to keep it this way. And then I'm going to say that the aggregate function, the ag func, is going to be equal to sum like this. I'll save. Then we'll come down and we'll just print out our by product data frame and we'll just double check that it's working and we'll run it. And there you go. You can see that we have now a summarized pivot table of all that data that we've been using. So you can see how many t-shirts in which sizes have sold over that over all of those reports that we created. Just because we added them all to one data frame, we can then summarize that data like this. So let's do another one. Let's copy this, copy this line, and we'll do by country. And we'll say index is going to be, uh, we'll just have one index, and that's going to be country. And the values can be quantity as well, so we can see how many specific, how many just general items we sold by country. So then we'll print out by country and save and run again. And there we go. You can see all of the number of units we've sold by country. And we have in this data sold a lot of stuff into Peru, Sweden, France, etc., Brazil. So there you go. You can see all of that.
So it's all very well seeing that there, but how do we export these pivot tables to CSV files so we can actually share them with our coworkers or do whatever we need to? Well, it's exactly the same as exporting any old data frame to a CSV file. You simply do by product dot to CSV and then give it the file, the file and the form, the folder and the file name you want to export it to. I'm going to do result and then by product product. CSV. Now it's important when you export out a pivot table, you want to include the index because the index are, is here, these columns here. So if you did index is equal to false, you're going to miss a load of the data. And I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and we'll do by country again, and we'll change the file name by country. I'm going to save. We're going to come back over here. We're going to run. And I've called this result when it should have been results. This results is the correct folder. There we go. And we'll run again. Done. Again, we're getting some uh, warnings here, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about those. And now we have our byproduct and by country CSV file. Here it is, item size and quantity for everything there, all neat and tidy. And country, again as well and a nice CSV file. Now I tend to always import, uh, I tend to always use CSV files, but uh, you can also ex export to Excel and XLS. You might just need a little um, uh, extra dependency, but it will tell you if you do so. So I'm just gonna remove some of this stuff that we don't need so we can just get a better look at the actual files. So we'll put that in there and I'm gonna format my code. Sweet, I didn't need anything. So with this 23 lines of code, what we've done is we've taken seven CSV files of different of the same report that maybe they've come from different people or different places, or maybe you can only export a certain amount each time. We've added them all together into one single file, one single data frame, which we then exported into, uh, where is it? Which we then saved to a CSV file of everything and then we changed the date type. We probably wanted to do that before we saved it here. And then we created a couple of pivot tables and exported those. Now, if you had to do this every week in Excel, maybe it would take you, I don't know, if you're only doing seven files, probably it takes you half an hour. But with Pandas here, we've done all the work ahead of time. We just put those new CSV report files into this folder, run this script, and done, away you go. So hopefully that's given you something to think about. Pandas can do loads of stuff. Anything that Excel can do, Pandas can do. All you gotta do is Google, how do I do this in Pandas, and you'll get a million results, and you can basically usually just copy and paste people's code, and it will work most of the time. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help me out. Come join the Discord. I do lots of stuff with web scraping, data extraction, a little bit of automation, data uh, analysis, a little bit as well. So you might find something useful there. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you again soon.